It's time to make it Just give it a try Cause you can make it Like the old fat guy Welcome to this episode of You Can Make It. I'm David Farrell, the old fat guy. I'm not cooking anything today. Instead, I'm going to do a review of a new toy. I have here an Inkbird wireless food thermometer and it's model number I as in India, R as in Romeo, F as in Foxtrot, 2, S in Sierra, A as in Alpha. Now what this is, is a radio frequency wireless thermometer for use in your oven or your smoker or barbecue. Uh, the reason it's important that it's radio frequency is that that will have a longer range than Bluetooth. So this wasn't a very expensive model, but it says it will give you a range of up to 500 feet. So we're going to try it out. This is the box that came in. We're just going to open it up. And we have a warranty card, booklet of instructions that I've already read online. We have the sending unit. We have the receiving unit. And what else have we got in here? We've got two probes. And we have a clip for using one of the probes to keep track of the heat inside of a barbecue. You just clip that onto the grill so it doesn't, the probe doesn't touch the grill and throw your temperature reading off. Now, right away, I will say something that does aggravate me. Uh, this does not have batteries in it. They don't supply the batteries and you got to put your own batteries in and I always find that a bit of a pain, but it's not major. So let's see how easy it is to put the batteries in. We'll start with the sending unit and it's got a slide marker there. So let's slide that. Yeah, there we go. That came off quite easily. And we'll just put two AAA batteries in there. And then see how easily it goes back in. So we'll put it in and give it another slide in. No, that didn't go right the first time. Let's try it again. There we go. And it has a little clip here that is supposed to flip out so you can stand it up. That's a little sticky, but it wasn't too bad. And we see it automatically powered up and has an on-off button. And it has uh, the same button to control whether you want Celsius or Fahrenheit. So let's put the batteries in the receiving unit. Same thing, it's got a slide marker up there, so we'll pull that down. Came off easily. We'll put the batteries in. And let's see how easily it goes back on. So just give it a little bit down there and slide it up. Yeah, it's a little sticky. Now, nope. uh, a little bit of a pain, but nothing major. And it also has a clip that's supposed to come off. Okay, that was a little more difficult to pull out, but not unbearable. So you can see you can stand that up. And it fired up right away. And here's a power button on it. So we'll just power it down for a second. Okay, so let's take the probes out. They're nicely shielded cables, as you can see. And let's see how long they are. Now these cables, all of them, these shielded cables, they tend to kink up. I haven't had one of these thermometers yet that doesn't, but that's a fairly decent length of cord. I shouldn't have any problem getting that in and out of my smoker or oven. And you'll note they put a little cover on the pointy end. I suggest you try and hold on to it. I always end up using them, but the first time you stab yourself with that, you'll know why. So we got the probe off and, oh, sorry, it won't go in the receiving unit. Let's see. Got one for each side, so this is probe number two. They number it. I like they number it. On my other one, I have, it doesn't number it, and I'm always trying to guess which probe is which. So I like the fact they number it. And we'll put the next probe in. Now, the thing about all of these units that use these kind of shield cables is you cannot immerse this cable in water. If you do, you'll ruin it. So just make sure you just clean the probe and keep this cable dry. It's very important. Okay, so there's the other one. We'll take the little tip cover off. 
and we'll plug this into probe one. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is see how accurate the temperatures are. And I'm just going to set up a water test with some cups of water. So give me a second and I'll be right back. So I have three cups of water I set up, one with ice water, one with warm tap water, and one that I just nuked for a while to get quite hot. And I've connected the send unit to both probes, and we're going to see what it says when I hold them in the center of the water. Okay, one's 163 and one's 165. That's not too bad. That's pretty close together. And my instant read thermometer says 167. Eh, a little bit apart. I'm not... That's somewhat different, but let, you know, 163, 165, 167. They're, they're in the ballpark, but you need to know it's not deadly accurate. And then I'm doing it into the room temperature, or excuse me, the warm tap water, and it's reading 88 and 88, exactly the same for both. And I've got 90, no, excuse me, 89 on my instant read thermometer. So they're very close. Now, some ice water, it's reading 52. Hold on, sorry, it's coming down some more. 41 and 40. And my instant read reads 42. So they're all pretty close. So this isn't laboratory grade, but within a couple of degrees of right on. So I'm okay with the accuracy of it. I don't think you'll have any problem cooking with those couple of degrees differences because you're not going to get it exactly right spot in the meat and whatever anyway. So the temperature part went all right. The next thing I'm going to do is turn on the receiving unit. And, oh, it helps if you hit the on button, <laughs> sorry. So I'm going to wait until it matches up or see if it matches up. There we go. It's caught up and it's matched up. And it's showing both these being the same temperature at 46 degrees. So we'll just put the in the water, see if it goes down with it. Okay, it obviously only sends a sec signal every few seconds because it hasn't gone down yet. But we'll wait. There it goes. 37 and 39. So it paired up immediately with no work for me. I just turned it on and it matched up. Now what I'm going to do is a bit of a distance test. It says it'll go up to 500 feet. I've measured about 450 feet out to my front drive. I'm going to leave the sending unit inside to because then it has to go through a wall like it would if you had your barbecue outside and just see what kind of distance I get for reading. So I'll see you back in a couple of minutes. I walked it down to the end of the driveway 450 feet away and had a good connection the whole way right through the wall of the house. It has got an excellent range, that won't be a problem if you want to use it a bit farther away from your smoker. But now let's have a look at the controller itself. It turns on and off easily just with the power button. So there it goes off. And just tap it and it comes on. It has a backlight you can turn on and off. You select which probe you want to set by just pressing the button and it goes to probe 2. Then it goes to a countdown timer that you can use and then back to probe 1. It starts off with preset cooking temperatures for meat. Like for ground beef, it says 160 degrees Fahrenheit. You don't want to be able to cook ground beef less than that because it's not safe. So that's the only setting there. Ground poultry, the same thing. It's 165. You don't want to go lower than that. But when you get to beef, you can do rare, medium rare, all that kind of thing. So it's got another button called taste that lets you walk through whether you want it rare, medium rare, well done, whatever. And it automatically adjusts the temperature for those settings for you. But what if you want to cook something to a temperature other than these preset settings for the meat? Well, you just keep hitting the meat button until you get to one that says program. There we go, pre-ROG program. So when you're in the program mode, you can set the temperature up down in exact amounts by just pressing the up or down button. Now I've set the temperatures to just a bit above room temperature here. And let's see if I can set the alarm up by warming the probe up with my hand to above the 67 I've set the probe to. Now it might take a second because it only pings every few seconds. There it goes. Got it up to 86 degrees, set the alarm off, the light comes on and it flashes. 
and you can shut it down just by touching any button. So that's how you can set it to an exact temperature that you want, not just the pre-programmed ones. It was way easier than I thought it was going to be. But the other thing you can do with this is keep track of the internal temperature of your oven or your smoker or your barbecue. And to do that, it's got a big red button right in the middle that says oven. And if you hit oven, you'll see that it's flashing on that probe up and down between the high-low readings. To adjust it, just tap it again, and it says high. So we're going to turn the high down again to something I can get it warmed up to uh, with my hand for room temperature, so below 80 degrees. Just hit the down button. Okay, well, see, nice 69. I should be able to get it warmer than that. Now, what about colder, though? It can, by hitting the button, again, gives you a low setting. So I've got it set for 50 for low. You can set it up or down. And i got some ice water. So first of all, we're going to try a low setting alarm and see if, it, if the alarm goes off when it gets down below 50. Just put it in some ice water here. Oh. There we go. Low temperature alarm. And you can turn that off. Now let's see if we can get the high temperature alarm to go off by warming it up with my hands. Hmm. I'm wondering if because the alarm went off when the low, it's now not going to go off with the high. Do I have to clear it somehow? Well, let's try Oh, okay, 69 high, so we'll set it down one, just reset it, and we'll try it again. Oh, there we go. So obviously, if the alarm goes off, you have to clear it before you get another alarm. But it worked fine for the high alarm, and it worked fine for the low alarm. Uh, no, no difficulty in setting it all. It was all really quite easy, so I'm quite impressed with that setting. Generally, uh, the unit seems to be very easy to use. It's quite inexpensive, and it gives a lot of features that more expensive remote thermometers don't have. It has great range. It's not deadly laboratory accurate, but it's within a couple degrees, which is fine for most of the stuff that you or I are going to be doing. I'd have no problem recommending this to any smoker or baker or anybody who needs to keep good temperature control over what they're cooking. I say that if you want to buy one of these units, you'll be able to barbecue well because you can make it. I have a good woman, I ain't good looking, but I do some cooking, I'm the old fat guy. So use that oven, if you want some loving, be like the old fat guy. Like the old fat guy.